He was he was the uh, 13 year old walking in the academy in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. And right on the bat you could see that his natural ability was amazing, you know. And I knew for sure that he was gonna be a if I could convince his father he was gonna be a world champion jiu-jitsu. Yeah. He proved that I was yeah. wrong, you know. He scored into the best college among the ten, the ten first students. Uh, this is the best college in Brazil when everything is for free, even your housing, everything belongs to the government. So everything, all his studies were paying for, and he was able to score among the ten first ones. And I think the first day of class, he realized that he couldn't, that he didn't belong there. Even though he was extremely smart, like everybody else in that room, they put him in a very special class, you know, for the gifted ones. And even though he belonged to that group intellectually, he actually loved sports, different from all the others. So he realized that he, he would rather have an outdoor life and a training life, like sparring and sweating and becoming a, a world-class athlete instead of just being an intellectual. And today he's both of them. He kind of is one of the one of the guys that I'm most proud of. It's uh, it's the it's the it's not only a great guy with a great heart, but he's uh, he combines brain with uh, physique, and it's it's an unbelievable combination, you know. And as a person, in a personal level, like he nicknamed he named his son Hanzo, you know, like how how better can he be? It's uh, and I, I really admire him. I'm I'm his biggest fan. And, and the reality is, it's someone that I really admire and I had the chance to see a flourish and, and become what he is today, you know, it's, it's like a, through life to have a chance to, as a teacher, this is one of the biggest beauties of my sport is to have the chance to hold a kid's hand and help carry him across the street, but in the end he's able to manage the, the traffic, you know, so it's, this is what makes me really proud you know? and to be able to be there to watch him growing and and mastering and today making unbelievable guys like you guys here training. I see this training session and I'm really impressed that everything that he learned and everything that he that he learned to be, it's on the mats. You know, it's like a, a great place to train, a great place to to share knowledge and, and to improve jiu-jitsu. Ricardo was always a, a very dedicated athlete. Like he never he never lacked training, he never slacked on his commitment to what he really decided to do in life, you know. One of the most amazing moments was when his father brought him over and tried to talk him into going back to Brazil. And like his father was a very high rank in the government and thought that Ricardo would have a place there too in the same way, you know, following his steps. And he came to me with tears in his eyes and said, look, I'm giving you my son and I hope I'm not disappointed in the end of the journey, you know. Like, so I'm really looking, I had great hopes for my son, but I realized that his happiness is here. He needs to try that. So please, don't don't let me be disappointed on that. A few years later, we met again in Japan. And after he got one of Ricardo's fights in the punk craze, like uh, he became the king of punk craze here. His father again looked at me with uh, a lot of tears in his eyes, and he said, "Thank you, thank you for bringing my son to where he is today, and and to show and thanks for showing me that." That, that's life out of the box, like that you can be a successful guy and a happy guy in a, in a different concept, concept and, and perspective. And he was very happy with that. He was very happy with uh, what he got to the team, you know, and I was, I was very glad for that. That was the award that I was looking, you know, through your whole lifetime as teacher. Well, you live with a guy for so long, you don't realize, but you start knowing everything that is going into to his head when he fought Nathan Marquardt, you know, and that was for the time. And I knew Nathan too, on the sense of he was a very proud guy, he was the champion. And I knew that the moment that, because Ricardo never let go of his naiveness. He, even though he grew, today he has, he has three kids, you know, runs an unbelievable school, he still is inside with me, like the kid that I met when he came over when he was 21. And the funny thing I knew by his naivety is the moment that he let go, he was gonna raise his own arms and completely forgot that he did the extra squeeze. <laughs> so, <laughs> and they, knowing the nature of Mark, I knew Mark would be angry and, and, and hit him. You know, I just regret that I wasn't there fast enough to hold Mark's hand. 
But I was there fast enough to kick him, you know. <laughs> you saw that too. You know, so that was. <laughs> but Mark is a great guy, you know, a great champ, and you know. And after he apologized, and he was laughing. We were laughing about that, you know. So it was one more, one more life stories that we're going to be able, when we grow old, to sit around the table having a a sip in a in a coke, and you know, and and laughing about how crazy those days were, you know. It was something that came naturally. When he moved to the United States, he lived in my house for a year and a half. And every class, I was back then I was teaching seven days a week. And Ricardo was my my helper right there. Ricardo was the first guy that came, then right after came Rodrigo. So they both of them were living in my house for that period of time and they were training and I was teaching them and making them better, you know. And we had met Sarah too, so it was an unbelievable array of a group of guys that were able to bring Jiu-Jitsu to a different new level. You know? uh, it makes me proud, and you know, and I, and I do, I get very, I get very cocky for that. <laughs> now the reality is, I, I we 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 build what we have today together. We sweat together. We train so much together. Like I said, he thinks I know what he's thinking. You know, like before he does, I know exactly what he's aiming for. And, and that was a privilege that he gave me of learning under me for that long and, you know, overlooking and rolling with him in an everyday basis like a nut job to make him better. And, you know, and I'm, very, I'm very happy that he, I was supposed to be in Abu Dhabi this week and I canceled everything. You know, the sheik is calling me, you got to come over here. I want to see you. We have to talk about business. And I said... And I'm here, until this UFC is over, I'm not going nowhere, you know? And I'm leaving on the night, the next day. It makes me very proud because it shows that he, he trusts. And, and one thing that people are letting go a lot, people don't realize how important is a corner man. It's like a corner man is not a man who goes in there and tells you to kill the guy. It's the guy that gives you the way to defend yourself or to submit your opponent, or how to win the fight. You know, it's, 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 it's actually a, a a guy. It's an angel on your shoulder pushing you in the right direction. And a lot of times people start lacking on, on, on and a lot of times this is the des decisive reason a fight is won or lost, you know. And Ricardo, I think, we had so much history together that I, I think he realized how important that is to have someone on your corner that is seeing things that you, you are not seeing in there. You're tired and you're under stress and you know, you, your, your mind plays tricks on you and it's always good to have someone that you trust to, to give you the right direction, you know, to tell you that, to tell you that that's a mirage instead of, a, mirage instead of a, a real solution. So if you have someone that you can trust that will give you the right direction, believe it, it's, it's like a walk in a paradise.